Unless we were all in and willing to take over Syria, we were going to have problems. And that everything else was tempting because we wanted to do something and it sounded like the right thing to do, but it was going to be impossible to do this on the cheap. President Obama in his news conference Friday defending his response to the Syrian civil war coming his remarks after the fall of Aleppo, which had been the center of rebel resistance. And we're back now with the panel. Carl, the, the president said in that news conference the only way that the U.S. could have successfully intervened was to make a major commitment of troops. Of course, we know what's ended up happening, which was the slaughter of 400,000 civilians. Do you buy his argument? No. Uh, the president offers this straw man whenever he talks about the Middle East. The choice is between doing nothing or half a million boots on the ground. Uh, he could have destroyed the air assets of, of uh, Assad after he dropped barrel bombs and used chemical weapons and thereby denied him the ability to do that by air and didn't. He could have armed the Syrian moderate rebels when there actually were moderate Syrian rebels. He could have backed the initiatives of the Saudis and the Jordanians when they wanted American support for their initiatives and didn't. He could have left a residual force in Iraq which would have kept the ISIS from moving into Iraq, destabilizing a bigger part of the region, opening a bigger door for Iran and thereby making the situation in Syria more complicated. But 400, 500, 600 million dead, millions of refugees destabilizing Not Europe. Not million, 400,000. Yeah, 400,000, uh, a, a million or two million refugees destabilizing Europe. This is the, and, and, and feckless U.S. foreign policy. These are uh, the, uh, these are the credits on, on President Obama's uh, uh, report card when it comes to Syria. We ask you for questions for the panel. And on this issue of whether or not President Obama could have done more and his contention that he couldn't. We got this from Christopher Hess on Facebook. He could not have done more. He didn't do anything. He should have enforced a no-fly zone, created safe zones, and gone directly after Assad and gotten rid of him. Neera, how do you answer, Christopher? I think the issues are that a couple, the, there is a live debate whether years ago we could have done more to defend or to help the moderate Hillary the Clinton moderate back forces. in 2011, in fact, was urging that they put more support for the Syrian rebels. Yes, and the question always has been that once you start down that road, it does become one in which what happens when they're slaughtered? Do we defend them? Do you put troops on the ground? He has been concerned about the slippery slope, and we have seen that we have taken other actions, obviously our engagement in Iraq, which is a contributing factor to the de de destabilization of of the entire Middle East, and in fact, a factor in what has happened in Syria has been part of this problem. But I appreciate the situation in Aleppo is a disaster. What has happened in Syria has, there are no good answers at this point. And I hope uh, this is one area where you'd see a different course perhaps with the new president-elect, but we aren't seeing that. In fact, we're seeing you know, his positions on Syria have been to exceed to the Russians. He has argued that the Russians are actually going after terrorists. I think that is, a, I think that is disconcerting that the president-elect would be making these kinds of arguments that are pro-Russian and, frankly, in the interests of Iran in, in Syria as well. Speaking of the interests of Iran, Michael, how much do you think the president's policy or non-policy in Syria was driven by his desire to do nothing to interfere with making a nuclear deal with Iran? A ton, and we see the evidence of it. The Wall Street Journal has a, has an article out that talks about the fact uh, that that when the president was thinking about whether or not to enforce his red line over chemical over the use of chemical weapons, Iran came in and said, "If you enforce this red line, the nuclear agreement, which has become the kind of." Um, uh, which he was obviously pursuing, that the, the nuclear agreement was done, was dead. At the time of the nuclear negotiations, the Wall Street Journal reported on a letter President Obama sent Ayatollah Khomeini saying that I will not uh, be going after Assad. And so very clearly the president's kind of uh, uh, ambition to get this deal with Iran, this kind of view that maybe if we get Iran on our side we could unite against Sunni radicalism, uh, that worldview, which has been a failure and is, has taken us from the position we were in in 2009, where with the Green Revolution you had a chance for a once in a generation uh, change in the regime of, of, uh, of one of America's biggest enemies to the disaster we have, and it's because of the pursuit of this nuclear agreement, uh, which has been a disaster. Let me, br let me bring one in, and then I'm going to come back to you. Uh, 
whatever the reason for the Obama policy, whatever the justification, in addition to the, to the humanitarian carnage that happened here, you've, the fact is that Assad now seems secure in holding on to power, and Iran and Russia are stronger in the Middle East. I mean, that's not a successful policy, is it? No, I mean, you know, we've got a problem here in terms of Russian influence because I think when we talk about no-fly zones, safe zones on the ground, all that, you have to then enforce them, and that would be the U.S. responsibility if you establish such a, a standard. But wouldn't that have been a reasonable thing to do to prevent what we've seen? No, to come back to your question, I think Russian and Iranian influence has grown in the region, and the question was with Russia coming in at first saying to the United States, to President Obama, we will work with you. Just this week, the, the announcement, the evacuation is over coming from Russia, while we know the carnage was continuing, and Samantha Powers at the United Nations saying to the Russians and the Iranians and to President Assad, have you no shame, because they continue this But, but, this but my path. point is, couldn't they have instituted the no-fly zone long before the Russians ever came in. There were two or three years there before the Russians entered. If they had enforced a no-fly zone, if they had taken out the Syrian air capability back at the time of the Red Line over chemical weapons, none of this would have happened. I don't think so. I think, to the contrary, you might have accelerated the degree of difficulty uh, in specific that you would have then had the Russians come in because the Russians and Iranians have been backing Assad all along. He is their puppet, in my opinion, and they would have acted to protect their interest in the region. So I think, and once, uh, don't forget this, if you take out Assad's air, then you are essentially putting us in there as a force, and the force then might be threatened not only by Russians, but consider the Turk Turkish government, which had a relationship in terms of oil, Lots of other factors. That's the problem. And, and you know, Carl? one last point on this, to yeah. Carl's notion, you know, the American people did not want to go in. Given what happened during the Bush years, Carl, they did not want more boots well, on the ground. <clears throat> well, first of all, again, thank you for the straw man argument that we need a half a million people on the ground. I didn't we say did, that. We, no, don't, we, don't. We, we didn't need that. We needed decisive action. And, and, and Chris, uh, the point that Chris brought up is absolutely right. If we had acted in 2009, 10, 11, 12, before the Russians appeared, if we destroyed the, uh, the, the Syrian air bases, there would have been no air bases from which the, into which the Russians could project their power. President Obama succeeded at something that no president since 1972 has been able to achieve, and that is he has brought uh, Russia back into the Middle East, and he has also given greater authority and power in the region to the Iranians by a consistent series of foreign policy failures. But yes, if we had acted earlier, we, Hillary Clinton was right. In 2009, 10, and 11, if the United States had not had a feckless foreign policy leading from behind, if we had taken decisive action and backed up the words of the president, it was not a Republican, it was a Democrat. All right, 30 seconds, Sarah, and we're, then and we're out the, of time. The real the truth here is we don't know. There are a lot of hypotheticals on both sides. What's happening now is a disaster. What I think would be great is for people who are so open to criticism of Barack Obama. Barack Obama has never said, you know, it's good what the Russians are doing because they're going after ISIS when they're slaughtering innocents. And I wish, Michael, you would be as critical of, of President Trump's policies, which are actually helping Russia and pro-Iran. He's President Obama there is, is no never President Trump right there, now. It, he will be held accountable to right, foreign guys, your foreign policy. It's good, it's situation. Good guys, to, we're going to continue. I, I wish you could be here, folks, because criticism. we're going to continue this during the commercial. Thank you, panel. See you next Sunday. You ran right through the red light on both panels.